In the news this week, Knife Prime solved an exclusive opinion poll underway to gauge your views on new knife warning laws effectiveness towards crime reduction. Also tonight, the parents of the 21-month-old baby who died in hospital front the media, alleging the demands were ignored by hospital staff. On Western Perspective, prepare for battle. Korean Labour MP Paul Lilliburn puts in the effort to prepare against liberal resurgence. Light Space returns to King's Park, a mesmerising fusion of art, light and sound. Plus, Dr Andrew Miller's comment. This is The Evening News with Ivan Loom and Maliva Thorne. Good evening. An exclusive WIM News opinion poll is ongoing right now, seeking your perspective on whether you are confident that the Cook government's new knife warning laws can reduce crime. The question is, do you think introducing new knife scan laws is enough to stop knife attacks before they happen? So far, just over 30% of participants believe that the new laws can prevent knife crimes, while over 60% says they don't believe it will reduce knife crimes. The opinion poll will continue until next Friday. Liberal leader Libby Metham commented on the initial results, particularly on whether she agrees with former PCYC CEO Jock Gillespie's suggestions that knife prevention education should target primary school children from grade 6. Uh, I can understand a community believing that there is not a single measure which will address these issues. Uh, we also believe there needs to be a multi-pronged approach to this. Uh, we need to see a court system uh, which better matches community expectations as well when it comes to crime right across the community. Look, I believe parents have a role in, uh, in, in stepping up in, in this place. Um, there are also early intervention measures. Uh, PCYCs play an incredible role uh, in uh, reducing levels of youth crime in the community as well. We look forward to bringing you the final results next weekend, along with Peter Kennedy's in-depth take on the opinion poll outcomes regarding knife crime prevention. The parents of a 21-month-old boy who passed away following a trip to Joondalup Health Campus have faced media. The parents of Sandy Pandar, who say they were refused blood tests for their son despite asking both GP and hospital staff, experienced the tragic loss on the 24th of March this year. Their young son had been experiencing fever-like symptoms following receiving his vaccinations in late February. However, a week later he was still sick, and so the family went to the medical centre. The family would later return to see a different GP at the medical centre and then go back a third time before being referred to the Joondalup Health Campus. He was sent home from hospital and was presented days later at the hospital again shortly before he died. Mr Dar alleges the senior doctor or the child specialist at the hospital refused to give his son a blood test despite the family's insistence. I'm considering myself as very unfortunate. Till today, I've been considering, as I said to you, that I'm a proud Australian. But now I'm considering myself very unfortunate to be an Australian. Where our first five issues that we should be taken care of by the government and medical sector is one, is not taken care of properly. Where we are considering ourselves within the first nation country. We've um, looked at that as part of our investigation as to uh, the asking for a blood test uh, and we interviewed our staff on that and I think it's something we really need to talk with uh, Mr Dar about uh, on Monday um, because uh, they clearly expressed that a blood test was requested um, but our staff uh, didn't pick up those cues or uh, certainly when we interviewed them um, didn't, uh, didn't say that a blood test was refused. As the report as reported and confirmed in the coroner's report, uh, Sandipan had a very serious life-threatening uh, underlying health condition. Um, but I am concerned to hear that the Dar family felt that they were not listened to, both at the GP clinic and the hospital. It is imperative that families are heard and listened to when they bring their children to hospital. And there, if there is more that we need to do in this space, then we will do that. We've reached out to the Dar family and offered to meet with them and I understand the family are likely to take this up. And it's my, also my understanding that they met with the Attorney General as his constituents who assisted with receiving the coroner's report. Hi there, are you looking for a new home or want to refinance your current mortgage to get a better rate? At AA Finance Solutions, 
We have the expertise and knowledge to help you to find the right loan for your needs and budgets. Contact us today. Let us help you to make your home ownership dream a reality. AA Finance Solutions, your local mortgage broker. Families are continuing to feel the cost of living crisis as rental and house prices skyrocket. An increasing amount of Western Australians have now taken to share houses with other tenants to ease the cost of living. Paige Reid reports. Families continue to struggle as the state's housing crisis continues. West Australian families are now paying as much as $750 for rent a week in some suburbs and as much as $830,000 for a mortgage. Suburbs as far as Baldivis are now feeling the strain with people paying on average $630 for rent. IQI WA sales manager Leanne Chong says rental and housing prices are only going to continue to rise and prices are not going to drop anytime soon. And the rent is easing now, which is a little bit better for a lot of the rentals, but in terms of house price, because the supply is still not enough. And we're having a lot of people coming through and the demand is there. So yeah, for the next 12 to 18 months, probably the price will keep going up. The government say they are doing what they can to help WA families with the cost of living. With housing prices continuing to rise and rental prices continuing to skyrocket as much as 18%, Chong says wait times are long and there are many struggling to find affordable homes. People are definitely still fighting for the properties and it depends on the rental price. So we found that um, a lot of properties under 750 or 800 range is easier to rent out. So properties at about 700 or more is a lot harder to get people through because again, the rent is high and yeah, and you need to find a group of people to rent together. The Federal Reserve Bank boss, on the other hand, has refused to rule out interest rate rises. Patri, WAMN News. In a significant enforcement action, gaming authorities and the WA police force raided a suspected illegal gaming house, shutting down a high-stakes poker event at an industrial premises in Wangara. The operation is part of the authorities' ongoing efforts to combat illegal gambling activity within the community. As a result of the raid, the GWC revoked the gaming operator certificate of the event organiser and two professional card dealers who were allegedly involved. Additionally, the organiser's company lost its gaming equipment supplier certificate, which permitted the supply of gaming equipment and dealer services for such events. Eight players attending the event received infringement notices. Authorities seized a professional grade poker table, casino style gaming chips and other gaming instruments, along with $2,800 in cash. It was reported that chips worth $13,000 were being wagered during the event. The Multicultural Services Centre WA held their Italian Day celebration at the rise in Bayswater this week. The event was attended by a majority of elder Italians and was full of delicious food, music, dancing, prizes, as well as speeches. The Bayswater Mayor, Philomena Pafferati, was in attendance, as well as Labour candidate for Mount Lolly, Frank Polino. The Mayor says that the older generation is so important and that she values their contributions to WA. Mr. Palino, who gave a performance at the celebration, performances at the celebration, and was formally trained as a singer and a musician. Really great opportunity for Italians in Australia to celebrate their heritage, um, National Day of Italy, and it's wonderful to see so many people here having great time. <laughs> they called it an encore. They did. Uh, I'm very, uh, very humbled by, uh, by, uh, by that. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, yeah, as as most people know, I do perform. I am a, I am a musician. Uh, I am a singer. I have done so since uh, the age of seven. Following a sellout inaugural season in 2020. Lightscape has once again transformed Perth's iconic Kings Park into a breathtaking fusion of art, light and sound for 40 magical nights starting this Friday. Last year, more than 180,000 people experienced Lightscape. The seven-week festival celebrates Western Australia's exceptional local flora, with this year's theme focusing on the mysteries of roots and the secrets beneath the surface. The audio-visual experience is brought to life with artistic LED lighting designs, artwork, First Nation storytelling recordings and modern pop music. During its first night this Friday, hundreds of citizens were amazed by the experience. The event will continue for 40 nights until July and tickets are on sale now at Ticketek. You can also watch our Lightscape walkthrough via the WMN News social media page. 
And now here's Leo Puglisi with what's coming up on 6 News tonight. Thanks guys, the top stories we're following on 6 News today. Israel announces the rescue of four hostages taken to Gaza on October 7. Treasurer Jim Chalmers urges Australians to remain positive after announcing just a 0.1% rise in the GDP over the first three months of this year. And in Sport North Melbourne get their first one of the 2024 AFL season after feeding the West Coast Eagles in another close finish. You can of course watch 6 News Live 24-7 on our YouTube channel and our website 6 For now though, it's back to you. Thank you very much. Well, as you can see earlier, Lightscape is back for 2024. Melly, I know you love it last year. Are you going to go again this year? Definitely. I'll be there. It looks like an event that can't be missed. And of course, uh, I've spent around 45 minutes around there. Uh, I think it's a bit of a comfortable thing. I'm not so sure what you think, but I know that you're going to bring some of your friends along as well. Are you going to go there with you? Yeah, I think so. I think that it'll be an enjoyable evening to share with others. Mm -hmm. And um, I think can only recommend everyone in Perth to get down and support a great time. And of course, you can watch it. Uh, in fact, the whole thing on WIMN News as well. If you are thinking of whether you want to experience it yourself, it's all on our social media pages. And now, his page read with Western Perspective. Thanks, Ivan and Melly. Welcome to Western Perspective. I'm Paige Reid. In this week's The Battlers interview series, we spoke to another MP who's preparing to defend a previously safe Liberal seat. Although Kareen Labor MP Paul Lilliburn is optimistic about his chance of winning, he's emphasised that he is not taking anything for granted during this week's feature interview. So what challenges have you discovered since obtaining the Kareen seat and what have you done to fix them? Oh, thank you Paige. Good afternoon. Uh, since getting elected in March 2021, I have uh, successfully delivered on $32 million rebuild for Kareen Senior High School, uh, $34.5 million dollars for the rebuild of Dunkraig Senior High School which is nearing completion, uh, 8.1 million for Sorrento uh, Surf Life Saving Club which was in great disrepair and uh, that is underway uh, as we speak and 1.1 million for women's change rooms and a new grandstand at Sorrento Football Club. Uh, incidentally on top of that since getting elected uh, I have delivered over $160,000 each to Marmion Primary School, uh, Green Primary School, Pointer Primary School and Davilia Primary School. I've delivered $200,000 worth of lighting at Charles Riley Reserve to support further sporting activity um, and am the patron of many, many clubs including Green Calisthenics, uh, Stella Natale Italian Australian Theatre Group that runs out of Dunkraig and Sorrento and uh, numerous other sporting groups in the electorate. Is it better for you now the seat has been redrawn? Oh, Paige, uh, in relation to the redrawing of the electoral boundaries, I am very comfortable if uh, at any of the times, because as a local who lives in the area and has lived in the area all his life, it makes no difference to me uh, whatsoever because the people know me, uh, they understand my inherent connection to the electorate, uh, and so the, the, any boundary changes that were proposed and now been delivered by the West Australian Electoral Commission were insignificant to me. What is your take so far on the upcoming 2025 election? Oh, we, the West Australian uh, Labor government, led by our Premier Roger Cook, uh, is very, very pleased at how we have moved and diversified our economy, paid down debt, and assisted our cost of living response to our uh, constituents in Western Australia, but also been able to enhance the infrastructure build and provide the most important uh, and needy people in our community with commun uh, fairness, which includes, of course, our attention of 2.1 billion to the housing in Western Australia. If you're elected again, what are you hoping to achieve? Oh, thank you, Paige. Um, I'm very confident about re being re-elected again in uh, 2025. I will continue to advance the uh, interests of the Korean district by uh, more uh, infrastructure builds, continue infrastructure for sporting groups and uh, enhancement of further improvements in Marmion Avenue and continual engagement with the lo two local governments in my area, being the city of 
Joondalup and the city of Stirling. Um, given this is a sa- usually a safe Liberal seat, um, how are you feeling? Do you, realize, do you think there's going to be any heat when it comes to this seat or how confident are you feeling? Oh, incredibly confident. Um, the local constituents talk to me every day and, and they tell me that there is no problem whatsoever in uh, March 2025. Um, being a local, living local, people know local and the Korean community cares. What challenges do you think you're going to be facing going into this 2025 election? Oh Paige, um, we are always looking to improve the cost of living uh, uh, for our constituents in Western Australia and we are aware and making active changes to ensure that those cost of living challenges are met and we're very proud of our achievements in that area. The uh, West Australian Labor Party is very concerned about fairness and equity and we will go about our business of good government and through community surveys and talking with my constituents every day, which I do, uh, the feedback is overwhelmingly positive that we have achieved and we have delivered for the Western Australian community and the electors know it. Uh, In particular, I could summarise it because the West Australian electors know what good government looks like and the WA Labor government led by Roger Cook is an exemplary example of that type of government in Australia. Are you confident that you can expand your margin against the Liberal Party? Oh absolutely, I'm looking forward to that uh, that challenge and uh, on election day there won't be any problem. We will continue to grow people's uh, knowledge of my engagement in the community, my care for the community, locals know. That was Paul Lilliburn and now here is Dr Andrew Miller with his weekly medical and news commentary. Hi, thanks for your time. The medical community and people around the world no doubt saddened by the passing of Dr Michael Mosley whilst he was on holiday in tragic circumstances uh, in Greece. Um, Our thoughts of course are are with his family and all the people who knew him well. Um, But we want to pay tribute to someone who was a respected doctor who managed to make the transition to being a scientific communicator um, in the media to many, many hundreds of thousands and millions of people around the world without making it all about himself. He wasn't a show pony. He just wanted to humbly present the science in a way uh, that would benefit large parts of the population. His message being to make small changes uh, to your lifestyle, to make big changes to your health in the long run. Those sort of voices uh, where it's someone not, you know, ruthlessly trying to self-promote are rare in in the media these days. And uh, we really do have to respect all of the contribution that he's made over these many years. Uh, And I suppose the best tribute that we can pay is to seriously consider taking his uh, message on board and to be grateful that there are people like him out there who are prepared to just get out there, put a positive, sensible message to people Uh, without needing to put themselves at the centre of anything. So uh, he's respected for his contribution, for his humility, for his accuracy on the science and the effective way that he was able to communicate with people. It's one of the characteristics of being a really good doctor in the profession. Uh, The best compliment we can pay uh, our peers is to say that we would have gone to them ourselves as a doctor and I certainly would have trusted Dr Michael Mosley. May he rest in peace. That's Dr. Miller and that's Western Perspective for this week. We'll be back again next time. But for now, back to you, Ivan and Melly. Thanks, Paige. And that's our weekly news and current affairs with the latest news on our website, wamnnews.com.au. Remember to subscribe to the WAMN Extra News Club so we can continue our work in the community. Full details on wamnnews.com.au forward slash news forward slash extra. From Melly, Paige and myself, wish you good health. Good night. See you next Sunday. Thanks for watching.